everyone, so today we'll be talking about what is the substantia nigra. So, what is the substantia nigra? Well, the substantia nigra is part of a what you call the basal ganglia, and the basal ganglia is a bunch of structures located in the brain, and they are the caudate nucleus, the globus pallidus, which is behind the putamen. The subthalamic nucleus, the substantia nigra, the olfactory tubercle, the ventral pallidum, and the nucleus accumbens. And over here we have a front view, and we like cut it in from the, our front view. And this is called a coronal view. And you can see the putamen over here. You can see the globus pallidus right behind, and the caudate nucleus is over here, and the thalamus is this yellow thing over here. And it's not part of the basal ganglia, the thalamus, but it's a related structure. Okay, so the substantia nigra will look like this, and it's like it's made. Of, it's like a black pigment. And what gives the black pigment? Well, to know that, we'll need to do some review. Okay, so this is a neuron, and a neuron has three parts: the cell body, the dendrites, and the axon. The dendrites receive signals from other neurons and pass it on. The cell body makes it a cell because it has the nucleus, which is this green circle. And the axon transmits the signal. And the axon is the actual nerve because it's the one that's transmitting the signal. And the dendrites will receive the signal from some other part. And the cell body makes up a bunch of cell bodies, makes up a gang. Okay, so now let's explore this one. This is called the axon terminal. So it's going to be connected to another neuron and the dendrite of another neuron. And if you look very closely, we see a gap. So they don't touch, but there's a gap in between. That's called the synapse. And therefore, the neuron, this neuron over here on the left, will be called the presynaptic neuron. And the one on the right is going to be called the postsynaptic neuron. Now, elect the electric signal won't be able to go through the gap because there's a gap. So we'll need a chemical messenger. And the chemical messenger will be called a neurotransmitter. So over here we have this black thing, and say that's a vesicle. Now vesicles won't be this big, but just to give you the idea. And there will be more, the, this red circle is the neurotransmitter, and there will of course be more than one neurotransmitter. So what will happen is the electrical signal will come and trigger the, the neurotransmitter to just go to the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron and it will be attached it'll attach to some receptors on the postsynaptic neuron and then it will be converted into an electrical signal and will go to the to the neuron so that's how a neurotransmitter is sent and one of the most famous neurotransmitters is dopamine and we'll be talking a lot about dopamine Okay, so the substantia nigra has two parts, the pulse compacta, which is this light one part, and the pulse reticulata. So the pulse compacta and the pulse reticulata. So the pulse compacta is, is, the, the, is the part that is actually that is black, and it's because the pulse compacta contains neuromelanin, and that's why it has the black pigment. So the pulse compactor is made up of dopaminergic neurons. And dopaminergic neurons produce dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter we were talking about. The pulse reticulata is made up of GABAergic neurons. And they produce GABA, which is also a neurotransmitter. And GABA stands for gamma aminobutyric acid. Okay, now it's, did you know that... Parkinson's disease happens when the substantia nigra produces less dopamine than usual. And Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease, which basically means it's it, uh, what happens is this, uh, a particular part of the brain is going to lose the function or the structure of its neurons. And in this case, the neurons in the, park in the substantia nigra are going to die. And that's what Parkinson's disease ha how Parkinson's disease happens. Okay, so let's talk about some other functions. So, the substantia nigra pulse compactor is important for regulating motor control. And motor is mus is anything related to the muscle. So it's, you can think of it like motion control and spatial learning. So it makes sense that the pulse compactor regulates motor control because dopamine plays a big role in motor control. 
So spatial learning is basically learning your own environment. So say there was a shop next to your house, learning the way from your house to your shop. That's what the post called spatial learning. The post articulata is important for, it plays a role in eye movement. So you, uh, by eye movement, I mean the eyeball. And you might have wondered that our eyes are so small, how do we get a panoramic view of our world? And that's because our eyeballs are moving very fast across our eye. And they are able to take they are taking signals from every part of, of what they can see. And that's why we have a panoramic view. And the post articulata plays a small role in eye movement. The post articulata also processes signals from the basal ganglia. And we'll talk more about that. So over here we've got our basal ganglia again, and let's talk about a little bit about the, and some more names. So the striatum is a part which is basically made up of the caudate nucleus, the putamen, the nucleus accumbens, and sometimes the olfactory tubercle. So the caudate nucleus and the putamen make up the dorsal striatum, and the nucleus accumbens and the olfactory tubercle make up the ventral striatum, and sometimes the olfactory tubercle is not included. Okay, so when, when I talk about striatum, I'll be mostly talking about the dorsal striatum, which includes the cardi nucleus and the putae. So, now, well, I want to talk about a pathway or a connection between the basal ganglia and other parts, which is called the direct and indirect pathway. So, say that you wanted to move your leg. What will happen is, the cerebral cortex, which is basically saying, I want to move the leg, will send a signal to the basal ganglia, more specifically the striatum. And this is an excitatory signal. So basically, it's going to excite the striatum. And it's going to tell the striatum, you know, I want to move the leg. And the striatum, since it's important for motion control, will get the signal. And it'll send it to the internal globus pallidus and the pulse reticulatum. Now, the internal globus pallidus and pulse articulata are not going to, like, they're not going to process the signal, but instead they're just going to read it and be like, okay, should I send the signal or not? And, but, and that depends on what this one is. And this, accordingly, is an inhibitory neuron. And by an inhibitory neuron, I mean it's going to stop it from stimulating. Stop the internal globus pallidus and pulse articulata from stimulating, unlike the excitatory neuron. So, the internal globus pallidus and pulse articulata uh, go, would be sending it to the thalamus, but because it's inhibitory, they cannot send the signal to the thalamus to inhibit the, uh, it from going. So, this, so now the thalamus will be getting the signal, and it'll get, send it to the cerebral cortex again, which is, and this signal is excitatory. So it's going to so it's going to stimulate the cerebral cortex. So as you can see, we're stimulating. We get to stimulate the cerebral cortex, and the main parts are the cerebral cortex, the striatum, and the thalamus. They're the ones that are actually process. The internal globus pallidus and the pulse reticulata are like getting the message and just reading it, and then thinking whether they should pass it on or not. So now let's change the order a little bit. So now I've changed the order and we have two more parts, the exterior globus pallidus and the subthalamic nucleus. So the, now what will happen is the cerebral cortex is going to send the signal uh, 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 again to the striatum, but instead of going straight to the internal globus pallidus, it's going to go to the exterior globus pallidus. And this is inhibitory, so it's going to stop it from inhibiting the subthalamic nucleus from exciting the internal globus pallidus and pulse articulata. So the exterior globus pallidus and subthalamic nucleus, again, are also like the internal globus pallidus and pulse articulata. They're going to just read it and pass it on or not. So now, because the, it's inhibiting the sub, the the exterior globus pallidus from inhibiting the subthalamic nucleus, it'll, the signal can go freely through the sub, subthalamic nucleus and get to the internal globus pallidus. And then we have the chance to inhibit the thalamus from sending the signal to the cerebral cortex. Therefore, we're not able to st to stimulate the cerebral cortex. And that's the indirect. The first one was the direct pathway, and this is the indirect pathway. And this is all regulated by the pulse compact. So the direct movement is allowing you to move your leg, but the indirect movement is saying, you know, 
I don't think we should we should we should not move the other leg because if you move the other leg, you're gonna fall, of course. So you could think of it that the uh, the indirect movement, the indirect pattern, mean is preventing unwanted movements from happening. Okay, now we'll talk about the nigrostriatal pathway. And the nigrostriatal pathway is basically the connection between the pulse compactor and the striatum. So the pulse compactor will send a signal and the neurotransmitter used here is dopamine. And dopamine has to get to some receptor. And the two receptors used are D1 and D2. D1, when dopamine attaches to D1, what will happen is it's going to excite the direct path. But when it so when it dopamine attaches to D2, it's going to inhibit the indirect pathway. So we're allowing the direct pathway to happen, but these are happening simultaneously. So they're happening in the same time. So it's exciting the direct pathway and in the same time inhibiting the indirect pathway. And during Parkinson's disease, this connection can get damaged. And that can affect motor control. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can watch my Talmus video over here and my Corpus Colossum video over here. Bye!